world. Okay, and share my screen. Oh, beautiful. Uh, that's weird. Wonder why I did that. Okay, perfect. Here we go. Okay, so um, while we are getting started, let's do our gratefuls and type one thing specifically that you are grateful for today uh, in the chat. One thing that you are specifically grateful for. Um, and oh, I love that, Kelsey. Your dog's mine is being crazy running around this room right now, so you may hear him in a second. Um, I'm specifically grateful for, oh good, I love that, family, friends. I'm specifically grateful for sunshine today. Um, I happen to be at Adam's parents' Bob's lake house working, and I've had to work the last several days all day long, so I haven't got to go outside. And um, today I'm semi-done-ish around two o'clock, and it is like nothing but blue skies, not a cloud in the sky today. So um, I cannot Tyler Red Bull. <laughs> That's a really good one, too. <laughs> Beautiful day in Charleston. I know I can't wait to get back there. Awesome. God's favor. Love that, Donna. Love that. Okay, so keep typing one thing that you're specifically grateful for um, in the chat. And I love to see what everybody's grateful for, by the way. And then, okay, does anybody want to share, um, unmute yourself, or type in the chat um, if you listened to the Ed Milet Max Out podcast and or if you watched Garth yet. So, Helen, I know you did. So, did you have anything? Um, what did you think of it? I found it very um, heartwarming. Yeah. And he's very down to earth, and it was really a very moving uh, video because I never expected to hear what I was hearing. Oh, it was great. Yeah. Yep. I know. I thought so too. I just loved it. Loved it so much. Wait, I do have to go. Yes, Caitlin. I know. It, I know you guys would love that. I just have to go back to the chat one second because Blair is having a baby this month. <laughs> so I know I told her this morning, I've been kind of, I, of course, I'm so happy for her and I cannot wait to see his cute little face. And I've been in such denial. I've been pretending like Blair's not been having a baby for nine months. <laughs> so this is the month. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, clear scan. Not me. I'm ready. <laughs> I bet you are. I bet you are. Um, okay. Wait, Dawn, which one did you listen to? Oh, did you listen to the podcast? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yes. what do you think of it? Oh, I love it. I love it. It's like, it's just, it changes your mindset. You know? Yeah, so, I know. So. He is so good. I mean, I had never heard the, the John guy before, so I was blown away by him. And I got the book as well. I ordered it. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah. I haven't done that yet. I need to. My book list is running really, really thick right now. I've yes. got like six I'm alternating through uh, at one time. So yeah. Um, yeah. Anybody else, um, any, anybody else listen to the podcast and want to share or Garth? Keep checking. Teresa, hi. Okay, Teresa will listen. Okay, good. Then I'm going to get rolling um, because I am, you guys, this, not to sound like weird, but this book is changing my life. <laughs> I mean, it is so good. I know, I think Stephanie, you said you'd already read this. Yeah, I, I really want to, um, I really want you guys to think about doing the book club. Um, I'm trying to, so I'm actually, I think I've talked to some of you guys have heard me talk about my coach, Terry. Um, and she's not only my coach, she is a mentor and just a great friend to me. And, and she just is like brilliant, um, with a lot of things, especially, uh, when it comes to obviously coaching and mindset and all those things. So she and I were talking and I've been sending her this book. Well, then she downloaded it on audible last week and she was texting me it like, Oh my gosh, this book, this book, this book. So I think that I have her, um, potentially talked into doing the book club with me. And we may, um, we may kind of tackle it together just to get her perspective also. And we may make it something kind of fun more than just a book club. Um, 
where we do some other things around with it. So anyway, we're putting that together this week. So I'm hoping to be able to have that to announce next to announce next week. But I want to I want to get into some of these things. And I'm just going to like highlight a few things from the book um, that have stuck out to me. Really, I've, I'm rereading. I'm starting over from the second for the second time right now. And I don't know how you guys are, but if I, I love to listen on Audible because I drive a lot. But I also like to take a lot of notes and highlight and write and stuff in the book. So I've been, I've been doing both right now. So um, this is one of the quotes from the book. I choose to be a super attractor and have unwavering faith in the universe. And, um, and I just, I love this because here's the thing. I kind of thought before, I'm just going to be totally transparent and honest. When people said like the universe, it was kind of, I just, that didn't resonate with me, I guess is the best way to say it. But she talks about the book is it can be whatever you believe the universe is, whether that's God, whether it's another higher power whether that's the, the actual universe that's rotating around. I mean, wh whatever that looks like for you. Um, but here are a couple of things. Uh, I don't know why that popped up last. So a couple of things just to start, and then I'm going to give you seven blocks that she says that you may want to write these down. So being a super attractor um, is what you believe means. What you believe is what you receive. What you believe is what you receive. And we so often forget how powerful and how strong our minds are. Um, and there's a paragraph in the book uh, that told me that I was supposed to be reading this book. And so I, I think I read this to you guys before, but I want to just read this, par this one paragraph to you again, because I'm hoping that um, I'm not the only one that this, that this resonated with. Um, it talks about pushers. Pushers are people who try to push and control to reach their goals and feel safe. They believe that the more they do, the more they'll achieve. They're trying to make things happen rather than allowing themselves to attract naturally. They've forgotten that there is support beyond their own action and will. Pushers believe that they have to make things happen and aligning and receiving guidance don't come into the equation. So it's all on them, right? They've forgotten where their true power lies. This is a common characteristic and it's one that many cultures often seem to reward. Pushers have a fear-based belief that if they're not super productive, nothing will happen for them. Guilty, by the way. Um, I've definitely been there. Little do they know that their pushy energy is blocking their capacity to attract. The universe this is the key sentence. The universe doesn't respond well to frantic energy. Rather, the universe vibrates at a positive frequency, and to co-create with it, your energy must align with that frequency. And so I was, I've been over the last, just kind of personal story, over the last couple of weeks, few weeks, um, I was looking at a, a business opportunity and just something in, um, in addition to all the things I do right now. And I was really pushing, like pushing myself to, to, I, I spent a lot of time researching it. I spent a lot of hours in it. Um, knowing though that the person and the people I really didn't want to be in business with, um, I was looking at it as an opportunity to, 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 for change and for some other things, but I really didn't want to be in business with, with those people. Um, to be honest with their energy and, and stuff d doesn't align with mine. And so I was really trying to push that. And I was telling myself I wasn't attached to the outcome. Um, but I think that I kind of was attached to the outcome because I was, I was pushing it a little bit too hard. And so through reading this book, honestly, and through just talking to friends and a lot of prayer and stuff, I just was thinking um, I, that it just, it wasn't, it's, I just don't think it's supposed to be, you know what I mean? It just doesn't feel like it's the, it's the right thing. Um, and I think it's because uh, it, it's not, it's not in the, it's not in the universe's energy for me to focus on that because I have so many other things I can focus on and pour into at a really high level. And so when I changed my mindset, yes, Teresa. So when I changed my mindset around that, to if it's not if it's not supposed to be then it's not supposed to be and i'm just not going to focus any more energy on it because it's taking too much of my energy and um and so i i just think if you think about that and you and you think about things and and all of you can think of a time where you really really wanted something to happen and it didn't happen and then you look back and you're like man that was the biggest blessing ever that that did not happen um or i'm so glad that it didn't and I think, but when we're in the moment, we're like, wait a minute, but this is what I'm pushing to happen. This is what I want. And sometimes it's just, it's just not supposed to be. So faith isn't hoping that God will help you. Faith is knowing that help is on the way. That's one of my favorite quotes out of this whole book. I love it. When we become out of alignment, um, when fear-based, low energy thoughts get us hooked, 
that's when we are not in alignment. And a lot of the misalignment she talks about in this book has to do with fear. And even if you think you're not a fearful person, like maybe you're not afraid of um, heights or spiders or, uh, you know, tragic events or whatever. Maybe you don't think you're a fear-based person. We actually all have fears inside of us and they're natural. And we've talked about those sometimes on here, but she talks about several ways to get in a realignment with yourself and the universe. And so she says, you should always say this thing. Um, I, uh, I forgive my past. I release the future and I honor how I feel in the present. So I really, I forgive my past, whatever it was, I release the future because it's, we don't know the future, right? We only know today and I honor how I feel in the present. And so a couple of little, just a couple of things she talks about. Um, and I just want to touch on this and hopefully you guys will all go get the book and, um, and we can all do it together in the book club. But she talks about number one is tough experiences. And here's what she talks about this. Even the toughest experiences offer you great wisdom and direction. And I know some of you on here have been through some really tough experiences. So um, she says, even the toughest experiences offer you great wisdom and direction. Be grateful for what has caused you discomfort because it reveals to you what you still need to heal. Take a moment to thank the situations in your life that don't feel good. Bless these issues so that you can set them free. Take a minute now to see it, the job loss as an opportunity to shift your career towards something that brings you joy. The breakup as a chance to love yourself more. Be open to receiving a physical condition as a chance to get closer to God. And then this was the key part I love that she said, the moment we choose to perceive pain as the catalyst for great healing and growth, we actually realign with the power of the universe. And this gratitude helps you get out of the feeling of being the victim and into the state of positivity. And I was like, oh, that is so good. Um, then she talks a little bit about intuitive guidance. And I kind of found this to be fascinating. She says, remember that we can't hear intuitive guidance from the universe until, until we're willing to ask for help. So receiving spiritual guidance requires that we become attuned to the energy of the universe. And so she gives an example. Imagine you're constantly complaining about your job to a close friend. They try to offer you guidance, but your incessant negativity and fear block you from even hearing the words that they're saying. You resist their guidance because you're so focused on what isn't working. Then finally, when things get too tough and you can't handle it anymore, you break down. You call your friend and you ask for help. Blair's like, yep, heard this many times. <laughs> they respond uh, with profoundly clear direction, compassion, and guidance. And you say, this is exactly what I needed to hear. And they reply, but this is what I've been saying all along. Their guidance was the same. The only difference was you actually chose to hear it that time. And so if you think about it, we have this intuitive guidance and we just don't listen to it. I don't know about you guys, but for me, it's probably because I run really fast. And so one of my things has been trying to slow down um, because when you're running really fast, you, you can't hear everything. You, you're, not, you, you're not ready to receive it because you're go, 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 go. And you're on to the next, on to the next. And so um, she talks uh, in this book, she calls the G-O-D, um, Good Orderly Direction. And you guys can read about it, but I'm just going to read you one sentence. You can trust when you let the universe lead you, you'll receive good orderly direction, which is the universal force of love, also known as G-O-D. You will be given intuitive ideas of where to go and what to say, and you'll be more easily led to a way through every single block that you come through. And so I want to share with you guys the seven blocks that she talks about. And so you may want to, um, if you don't have the book, you can jot them down. And, um, and then if you do have the book or you're getting the book, then you can go read about them. But the first block is believing. So these are the things that block you from being in alignment with yourself and with the universe. And honestly, we all have these. And I want you to be thinking about, cause I'm going to ask you, you don't have to share, but I want you to be thinking about, um, like which one or two do you feel like are your major blocks? Cause, because I have them as well. So block number one, um, is, uh, and she, oh, by the way, she says that these show up in sneaky ways. Block number one, believing in lack, which is the feeling of not being enough or not having enough. And she said, remember, there's a whole, there's a paragraphs about each of these. So I'm just going to read you the high points. This one, she says, the constant attempts to feel good enough come off as needy energy. And this low level energy actually repels the things that you want in your life. Um, it repels the support of other people. It repels the, the, um, your own creative ideas, inspiration from the universe, 
So the times that you're, um, that you're, the time and energy that you pour into trying to prove your worthiness actually block great things from coming your way. Block number two is thinking that there's not enough to go around. Um, she says this mentality, while it might spur you into action, can also equally paralyze people. So when they think that there's not enough to go around, I'm going to use the example because I am one as a real estate agent. Um, there's just, there's, we all can't be top producers because there's just not enough to go around. Um, there is enough to go around. And sometimes that can spur you into action. But if you look at it as a block, it can paralyze you in a really big way, or it can make you feel like you can only get to a certain level. Um, oh, oh, when she said, when you approach the world as a vibrational reality rather than a physical space, um, that's when your desires actually become real. And so you have to think there's, there's plenty of enough to go around. Block number three, and I've done tons of, tons of research on this, um, and Craig Rochelle's done so many wonderful messages around this, but block number three is comparing yourselves to others. Your inner vo voice of fear likes to use comparison to stop you from claiming what you desire. And I think we've talked about this before, but it happens to all of us and we don't even realize it. Um, like you remodel your kitchen and you feel great about it. And then you see your neighbor remodel their kitchen and you're like, oh my gosh, well, they have the waterfall island and the Carrera marble. And I just did courts. Like you, you don't even know, you just automatically do that stuff or you get a new car and you love it and you're so excited about it and you waited 10 years to get it. And then your neighbor comes with another car and you're like, oh, maybe I should have gotten that. I mean, it's little things that go through our head all day long that we do not even realize. But each time you compare your circumstance with another person's, you reinforce feelings of inadequacy in yourself. And so I've been very aware of this, even little things, even just really little things, because they can make such a big difference. Um, block number four is the need to win at the expense of having fun. I'm going to be honest. Um, I like to have fun. Uh, and I like to win. <laughs> and if I'm doing something, we're doing it to win, or I don't usually want to do it. And so this is, this was one that I actually, I highlighted 75% of the words <laughs> under this one. Um, but when we become competitive, we cut off the stream of abundance. The fear of losing or the need to win is really another form of lack um, one that implies scarcity. And I never really looked at it that way. So she says, what if you shifted your focus off the need to win and the fear of losing and onto how much fun the activity brings you? And I'm going to be honest and Blair, I'm using Blair, Blair, I'm using you a lot today. Sorry. Um, I, uh, I, Blair will know exactly what I'm talking about with this, but one of the biggest accomplishments that I've ever had, and Blair was a part of that accomplishment was when we were running um, a real estate office in Lexington and just crushed it. Donna will know that, will remember that very well too. And we crushed it. I mean, we were the, the top in the region two years in a row. We had the best people. I mean, it was just amazing. And I'll say, when th that was the very first thing I thought of when I was reading this paragraph because we had so much fun. I mean, everything we did, we had so much fun. And we, even though we were working like, oh my gosh, I don't even know. We laugh, Blair and I used to say on the weekends, sometimes we would go into the office and all we would bring is Oreos <laughs> and we would sit in the office and we would knock out all of our stuff and we would just eat Oreos on the weekend. And, but the thing was we had, so we were having so much fun and we won and we won big time. Um, yeah, 60 hours a week fueled by cookies. Hilarious. So true. And, and we had fun. So we wanted to win, but we had fun doing it. And so I kept thinking about that because she says, while it's awesome to finish first or win a big prize, it wasn't her primary focus. She said, I can honestly say that the reason I won was because my energy was, sur was surrendered. My focus was on having fun and I really didn't care about the outcome. And while we cared about the outcome at that time, we cared more about making that a great environment and about having fun. And really it turned into some really big wins. Um, one other thing she says about this is, if you need to win in order to feel good, be happy or successful, then competition only creates separation, judgment, um, attack, inner turmoil, and a belief in lack. When your happiness depends on the score, you're sending a message to the universe that you need to be better than someone else to feel good. And that energy is actually never supported. And I thought, man, that is good. Um, that's really good. So block number five is fearing rejection. And she just says that she encourages everyone to open up the idea that rejection is actually protection. And I really believe in this. So if you're rejected from something, 
uh, it's probably because you're being protected from something else. And, um, and this is a, this is really like a silly little thing, but I tend to get a lot of speeding tickets, <laughs> um, because I am on the road a lot and I'm surprise, surprise, usually always in a hurry. And so I tend to get a lot of speeding tickets. And so I used to get so mad every time I would get pulled over, I would just be infuriated. And then I switched my mindset to if I'm getting pulled over, it's, it's the universe it's God's way of protecting me from something else. And maybe there was a wreck down the road or something else was going to happen. And so I needed to be pulled over at this time to sit here and waste 20 minutes of my day <laughs> um, to protect me from something else. So accepting rejection as guidance gives you another opportunity to follow the flow of the universe, um, or for me, that's God, and strengthen your faith in a plan better than your own. And so you can't have this huge fear of Josh hilarious. You can't have this huge fear of rejection. Um, block number six is having a need more mentality. And so here's what she says. Do you ever feel as though once you achieve a goal, you immediately have to move on to the next one? Hopefully I'm not the only one that feels that the answer is yes to that. Um, not feeling complete in the moment of achievement. Do you keep reaching towards your next goal? The need more mentality is another form of lack. The outside search for success, accomplishment, and approval is an addictive pattern that keeps us out of alignment with the universe. And then she says this, if you believe in your ability to achieve your desires, then they will come into form. Having faith in your ability is important, but it's far from the only important thing. Um, when, you, when we enjoy the moment and we let the universe flow through us, we are guided to create what God intended rather than what we think that we actually need. <laughs> And I was like, man, she, I mean, like spot on every single word that, that she says. Um, yeah, Teresa, that's funny. A lot of people say that. Uh, oh, thanks, Michelle. I just saw that. Um, okay, so uh, block number, which one was I on? Seven, block number seven. This is the last one. Um, and it's the fear of being judged. And we really all have this deep down inside. Um, and the fear of being judged is just, what other people are going to think when we do something or when we accomplish something um, or, you know, when something happens. And so what she says about this that I love is there's no reason for you to play small any, anymore. I wrote, actually wrote this and I'm, I, kept, I have this on my phone now. There's no reason for you to play small anymore. The universe has big plans for you and it's time to claim them. So regardless of what is um, what you have a fear of, or if you are worried what other people are going to think, or um, maybe you, you blame others, um, or you have some sort of fear of being judged, uh, the reality is that the universe has big plans for you. You just have to claim them. And so I love that. So, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about uh, which of these seven blocks identify with you the most, because we all have them. And I mean, honestly, all of them do for me at some point or another. Um, and if you want to share, awesome. You can type it in the chat. And if you don't, that's okay too. But which one of these seven blocks do you feel like really identifies with you the most, or at least right now at the time um, of your life that you're in? And, um, and yeah, just think about that <clears throat> because they, um, they're so true. There's so many true things. So I want to move really quickly to being, um, beginning your day in alignment. And I'm going to share with you the affirmations, Ethan, comparing to others. That's, that's a big one for me too. Honestly, I've done a ton of research around that. Um, and not really in a, I don't even know that I do it sometimes not compare little things, but maybe stories or something. Yeah, definitely. I think it's, it's definitely a big one. Um, so she talks a lot about the way that you start your morning and, um, Honestly, I never used to be really great at this. Yeah, believing in lack. That's a really good one, Dawn. Um, it's so hard to choose, Kelsey. Yeah, totally right there with you. Um, comparison, fear of being judged. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, Monica. Yeah, thank you guys for sharing. So the morning, the morning time, here's what she says about the morning. And I gotta, I gotta hurry on time. Uh, the morning is a sacred time and must be cherished. It's when we choose how we want the rest of our day to go. A single shift in our behavior can redirect our entire day. When we sleep, we release resistance to negative thoughts. That means when you wake up, you actually have a clean slate in front of you, an opportunity to release the negativity from the day before and to begin again. Affirming positivity helps you take advantage of our connection to the universe and ride that positive momentum throughout the day. And I love this quote from the book, um, any given moment, we can change our story and say yes to what we truly want. As soon as we do, the universe delivers. And I just think if you keep believing that, it 
it, it's so true. So here are the morning ma ma mantra. How do you guys say that word? Ma man mantras? Mantras? It's like neat, neat niche or niche <laughs> for those of you who listen to the podcast. <laughs> this is one of those words I'm not super sure how to say. <laughs> um, I'm going to call them affirmations for easier, uh, for easier lingo for this Kentucky girl. Um, okay. So here's what, here's her, her morning affirmations. My body is rested and my mind is clear. I start my day with positive thoughts and energy. I am relaxed, non-resistant and clear. My day unfolds with ease and grace. People support me throughout my day. That's a good one. I love that one. Um, the universe supports my desires today. I'm open to receiving greatness. I am energized and inspired. Some of you have to have your coffee before you say that one. Cre Caitlin does. <laughs> uh, creative possibilities are available. Oh, yeah, somebody did too. Is that, I can't tell who that was. Um, the creative possibilities are available to me. Nothing holds me back. I take action with faith and clarity. I am healthy, well, and vibrant. I don't know about you guys, but this is one that I'm saying a lot of these days. Um, today is, is a great day. I'm having fun today. I bring joy to others. I bring light with me wherever I go. I am a positive influence on the world and all is well. And so if you, I've been keeping these, I actually typed these on my phone. And so I've been reading them in the morning. Um, and it, it just really does. I mean, I've always been an affirmation person, but I can't say that I've ever been super consistent with them every single morning. Uh, and she really challenges you to, to, to have these, but then to also, um, to also come up with maybe one that you have of your own and, um, and to just think about how you feel. I was just looking through, I mean, there are so many, there's so many things that I underlined when she talks about these affirmations. Um, you guys just have to, you just have to get the book. Um, but uh, I was trying to find the one, where is the page that she, oh shoot, I don't know, I can't find it. But anyway, uh, the one that I, that I have for myself that I'm saying every single morning is everything is happening around me and um, I'm truly taken care of. And honestly, if you think about that, because we have so much going on around us right now, <laughs> I don't know if you guys are feeling like that, uh, hopefully I'm not the only one that's feeling like that. Um, but we have, we have a lot going on around us right now. And so to just say that you're truly taken care of, and then, um, everything is working in perfect timing for the perfect outcome of where I'm supposed to be has been a big one for me because I've had a lot of different opportunities lately, which have been good, oppor great opportunities. Um, and, and other things that are challenges at the same time. And so every day I'm just saying everything is working in perfect timing for the perfect outcome of where I'm supposed to be. And it really just puts my mind at ease. Um, so yeah, uh, let me check the chat. The universe provides me everything. Yes, I love that, Dawn, love that. Um, yes, it is in the book and it is page 19 are all of the morning um, affirmations. And then she talks about that too. Um, I get to move in the morning, not saying I have to, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yep, love that, Abby, love that so much. So, okay, here we are, we're right out of time, um, but the universe has big plans for me and it's time to claim them. This is one of my very favorite ones. Um, I love this. I think maybe I need to make this. I wish I could have two screensavers because I can't get rid of my John Maxwell one, but I love that. So here's your homework for the week. Um, order the book uh, or download it on Audible. Um, it's on Amazon. I think it's maybe like 18 bucks. I can't remember for sure. Um, but go on ahead and get your book um, if, the, if you like this and decide if you want to be a part of the book club. And hopefully uh, next week I'll have full information on that for you guys. Um, and, then, uh, and then time block to say your daily affirmations. I would love next Wednesday for us to come back and some of you to share um, if, you, if you were able to say your, um, your daily affirmations and how it made you feel. It does make me feel really good because I'm not going to lie. I'm very bad at waking up rolling over, grabbing my phone and checking my, going straight to my email. Um, and it's helped me to be able to just kind of not do that, honestly. Um, and then keep with your handwritten notes. And oh my gosh, you guys, we hit over 800 people in the closed Facebook group now, which is crazy. And then one last thing, add a lot of people emailing and messaging me about um, how they could share these with people who weren't on Facebook or, or whatever. So um, I am through the help of Heather and Tyler. Um, these are all going to be on YouTube now. 
So you'll be able to share them uh, with people on YouTube if um, if someone's maybe not on um, not on Facebook and and they want to watch them later or join in or something like that too. So um, thank you guys. I hope this was helpful. Thanks to the new people and to the people like Monica who have never missed one. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your week. And uh, yeah, see you next Wednesday. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much.